one more current affairs note. Um, as you probably know, members of the United Nations are now seeking to criminalize mm -hmm. criticism of religion. Mm. They call it defamation, but really it yeah. is, as you pointed out in the other story, criticism. Mm. Here's what I find really interesting. The United Nations is mandated to uphold what we call the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, that declaration itself is um, rife with contradiction. On the one hand, it affirms everybody's freedom of expression. On the other hand, it clearly states that nobody should have his or her honor, and it calls it honor, violated. Mm -hmm. This is exactly, as you know, what many Muslims say is being violated by your books, by my books, by everybody's freedom of expression, if they feel offended. Mm. Given this contradiction between free expression on the one hand and the uh, you know, decree not to violate honor on the other, under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, how do clear thinking people navigate that paradox? Dishonorably. <laughs> I mean, I think honor culture is a very dangerous thing, and you know, we come from it. You know, and, and the thing about, I mean, to put it very simply, you know, Judeo-Christian culture has at its opposite poles sin and redemption. Um, there's no original sin in Islam. Um, there's no idea of original sin. So the question of sin and redemption doesn't exist. What, what exists instead at the opposite poles are honor and shame. Right. And, and, uh, and that's what mobilizes these kind of strong feelings. The trouble with honor culture is if you look at the way in which it's actually been applied inside the societies which hold to those values is first of all it's been used immensely to oppress women. Mm -hmm. uh, women are believed to be, like, oddly, honor is believed to reside in the male but shame is brought about by the behavior of the female. Um, and so in order to prevent the man from being shamed by the behavior of the woman you have to stop the woman doing more or less anything. Um, some of this is, is you, know, you know, ludicrous and comical. Um, I mean, I remember at the early days of the Iranian Revolution when a number of bizarre issues like this were being debated by the, by the Ayatollahs in Qom. One of the questions, I mean, this is, the, uh, you know, seriously, this is not a joke. One of the questions that was asked was if a woman is wearing head-to-toe chadar, but she's wearing Western clothes underneath, she's wearing a skirt underneath, is that okay or not okay? I mean, given that she's completely covered, um, and all you can see are her eyes. Right? And it was decreed that it was not okay. And the reason it was not okay was that the friction of her thighs against each other inside the skirt would generate sexual heat. And this heat would be transmitted through her eyes <laughs> um, to, to men who observed her and might inflame them in various ways. And that, of course was not acceptable. So no. The best of these arguments actually had to do with the limits of incest. You know this one? I don't this think is so. True. They, had to, they, had, they were asked in Qom to, to determine what is okay and not okay. Can you marry your first cousin, etc., etc. Et um, the question arose of the aunt by marriage. Was that an incestuous relationship? If you were to have relations with your aunt by marriage, I mean it might be improper, you know, and upsetting to your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> but, but was it actually incestuous to have relations with your aunt by marriage? And at the end they decided that, it, decided that it was incestuous and not to be allowed, but there was an exception. The exception was if you were not able to control the entry into your bed of the aunt by marriage, <laughs> uh, what then followed was not your fault. And, and for example, they said, if the art by marriage lived in the bedroom upstairs and the floor collapsed <laughs> uh, and the art by marriage landed in your bed <laughs> from above, well, no man could be expected to restrain himself. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I, I'm telling you these as kind of funny stories, but you can see that the, the problem of honor culture 
leads to these kinds of appalling aberrations. Right. And at its worst, of course, leads to the phenomenon of honor killings, yes. um, where, which, which sadly are not less prevalent than they used to be, more prevalent. It, it, it